What's going on guys? It's Gendo here, and welcome to episode 14 of the World's First, where today we'll be taking on Manchester United and Wolves, instead of Spurs and Wolves, because the Manchester United match was rearranged to split in between Spurs and Wolves. So, instead, we played the Spurs match off-camera, and instead we'll be giving you Manchester United and Wolves. So let's go over the matches that happened in the past month to show you how we got to where we are. After the double live com of Swansea and QPR, we then went back home and took on Bournemouth and defeated them soundly by the score of 4-1. to one. However, a hammer scored all five goals. Zivkovic, Oliver, and a brace from Jamie Vardy on our side, and an unfortunate own goal from Tommy Hoban to go one goal for Bournemouth. The match was completely dominated by West Ham, almost 60% possession, 13 shots, 8 on Vaman targets. The only downside, Sven Bender going out with an injury which would see him out for five weeks. He is available for a today's matches at least, but for this past run of form, he was not in the lineup. Now off the backs of three straight victories, we then took on Newcastle, and once again, we lost to them. We lost to them twice this season, and this time by the score of two to one. Jordi Reyna and Jeannie Wijnaldum for the Newcastle side. Jamie Vardy, the only goal scorer on our side. We both took the same amount of shots. We had more of them on targets. I felt that we could have come away with a draw in this match at the very least. But the finishing was just not there. We were not clinical enough. We weren't sharp enough, even though we played above average. Newcastle just took their chances, got a little lucky bounce by that Reyna one, and unfortunately, they come away with all three points. But we did bounce back with, quite honestly, a very lucky win against Everton at Goodison Park as we defeated them 3-1. Jamie Vardy getting himself a hat trick, 9th minute, 22nd minute, and then finally in the 86th. But his three goals were only three of four that were on target and five shots total taken by the Hammers compared to Everton's 23 and nine. Jonathan de Guzman being the only goal scorer for the Toffees. And like I said, we were very lucky to get all three goals as Jamie Vardy was pretty much sitting on the back heels of the Evertonian defenders for a couple of those goals. The Everton defenders pretty much kept us at bay, especially Seamus Coleman, Leighton Baines, but were not enough as we were able to steal all three points away from home on this day. And then finally, we came back home to the Olympic Stadium and wrestled a one-all draw away from Spurs, Oliver being our only goal scorer in the 31st minute, and then Sun Hung Min for the Spurs side in the 58th. Neither team had many chances to break the deadlock in this London Derby, as we only had four shots on target, Spurs had six. We did have more possession though, but at the end of the day, possession really didn't turn into a lot of goal scoring opportunities. And as such, the score stayed and neither team getting all three points. Right, and that'll take us to today's matches versus Manchester United and Wolves. And as you can see, we are still sitting in eighth place, just one point behind Manchester United now. However, the top six look as such. Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Tottenham with Manchester City and Stoke still hanging around as they are both tied on points, but Manchester City having the better goal difference. Bottom three look pretty sad. QPR, Cardiff, and West Brom. Wolves just hanging on the edge of that relegation zone. Maybe with a win against them today, we can push them into the relegation places. But first, before we even get to Wolves, let's go and take Manchester United on. And it is going to be played at Old Trafford today. Manchester United coming out in a 4-5-1. And this is how we're going to line up. We're going to use the anchor today. And the lineup is as follows. Victor Valdez in net. John Ta and Bikicic, the two center backs with Flanagan and Cresswell, the two wing backs. Sven Bender, the defensive mid. Obiang, the only center mid. The three attacking mids of Payet, Oliver, and Zivkovic. And, of course, Jamie Vardy sitting up front in the striker role. Now, of course, a win today against Manchester United will push us into that all-crucial 7th place spot. Maybe we can use that as a springboard to get even further into European placement. But that all hinges on if we win today. So let's kick off and see what happens. Hopefully, get a win. And all right, not even three minutes in, and Manchester United are getting some great passing movement going. Schweinsteiger up to Memphis. Memphis out to Roland who does have options in the box, so he's going to cut it inside and take it himself, and he lasers it into the back of the net. Diego Rowland putting Manchester United up 1-0 early, and that's not good for us. 
Like I said, some great passing movement. I thought Roland was going to cross it into the box, cross it into Memphis, but he takes it himself. Cresswell just could not get a tackle in, and Roland lasers it past Victor Valdez. 26 minutes on, and West Ham have not had a single shot taken. Manchester United have done very well to cut out our attack. But now here they come again, 27 minutes. As I said, Flanagan does cut out that attack. Bikicic. Oh, what are you doing? I really don't want to relive this. This was god-awful. Victor Valdez smacking into Bikicic's face as it goes into his own net. Memphis coming forward on an attack. Memphis makes it three. And we're just completely losing it. We're completely losing the plot. Defense doesn't know what to do. Discard the changes. Don't care. It's, it's a complete shit show on the back line. John Todd just running with Memphis. He thought he was in a race. He didn't know he was playing football. Didn't want to make a tackle. Throw in Flanagan to Cresswell. We have an attack. We have a chance. Finally, off the post. And number four, Sven Bender was there to try and get the rebound, but he just didn't have the vision. And we probably could have gotten one back right at the end of halftime, but as it stands, it's 3-0 to Manchester United, and they're completely just bossing this game. And there's nothing else I could say about that. It was absolutely terrible from the side. We need to turn it around. And I don't know if we can get all three back. If we can at least prevent the shutouts, at least get one, I'll be happy. Corner kick, Manchester United. It's coming in. Oh, and Obiang gives away a penalty. Oh, that's... More icing on the shit cake. And Bastian Schweinsteiger's coming to step and take it up. Excuse me, I can't speak words anymore. Schweinsteiger makes it four. Flanagan into Oliver. Can we get something? Can we get one back? Zivkovic to pay it. Pay it, good shot, but to hey a good save as well. That was our first shot on target. And it comes 53 minutes into the match. De Gea with a save off the corner. Some decent passing from us now. Zivkovic out to pay it. Trying to get some players forward. Oh, what a bad pass from Bender. But Obiang picks it up. Zivkovic out on the wing. Two men in the box. He can cross it. He tried, but that was well wide. That was well out. One minute of stoppage time. Pretty much come and gone. And we're going to end 4-0. A very emphatic loss to Manchester United as they seal... A very solid 7th place spot, whereas we stay in 8th. I mean, that's pretty much obvious, but to, to lose like this was the worst part. It was a rather shocking match. And we have uh, Newcastle creeping up on us, too. They're just sitting two points behind us. Hopefully, we can uh, increase the distance, or at least keep them at bay, with a win versus Wolves. So let's uh, get back in a couple of seconds with that Wolves match. All right, then, let's pick ourselves up versus Wolves, shall we? We're traveling to Molyneux today, and this is going to be the starting lineup. A little bit of a rotation due to fitness. We're going to have Adrian in Nets, Flanagan, Tommy Holman, Bikicic, and Sayed, Sayed Kalashnik, excuse me, going to be along the back line. Or two center mids, since we're using the Holy Hand Grenade, modified Holy Hand Grenade, will be Marky Noble and Marwan Fellaini. Our three attacking mids will be Florentinase, Dimitri Payet, and Zivkovic. Payet moving to the center because Oliver not looking so sharp, and Tanase out on the left. And sitting up top, Alberto Peloshi, who doesn't really start on much, in fact, he doesn't really play all that much, is coming in to give Vardy a little bit of a rest. Plus, with that advancing forward role, give a little bit more pressure on that Wolves back line. So, with this little bit of rotation, hopefully we can still secure results, still get all three points. Let's kick off, see what happens. Corner, Zivkovic whipping it in, goes far post. Flaney and Tommy Hoban, oh, could have pulled back. Could have turned and shot, but he didn't, and instead that is going to be a wasted chance for West Ham. Throw in, Shade Kalashnik. Gets it in. Gets it back out on the left. Flanagan comes in, and John Flanagan puts West Ham up 1-0 at the 35th minute. That was a great cross in from Kalashnik to his fullback partner. And we finally break the deadlock. Fellaini to Hoban. Some great passing. Confusing the Wolves defenders. Flanagan going near post. Keeper couldn't do anything about that. Great job, boys. Come on. We're doing well with our passing so far. However, only one goal to show for it. 
is concerning me just a little bit, but we are keeping the pressure on their back line like what I wanted to do, and I believe that another goal will come through for us. So just want to tell them to keep it going, and we will definitely come away with a victory. Corner kick, Zivkovic going far post. Fellaini coming in. It's off the post. That's an own goal. That's got to be an own goal. It is. It is a Stevens own goal. It's not a Fellaini goal, but it's a goal nonetheless for West Ham. Look at this corner kick. Zivkovic finding the big head of Fellaini. Uh, it actually bounced off the post and then off the defender. I see. But it's 2-0 to West Ham. Come on, you irons. Let's go. 68 minutes, and I already have players looking a little distressed, looking a little tired. Definitely going to be subbing out players very soon. But Fellaini getting ahead to Kalashnik. Options in the box if he can cross it in. But he doesn't. Instead goes out wide to pay it. Has to go all the way back to the center circle. Noble. Back to Kalashnik. Two men in the box. He can cross it in. Tanase to Poloshi and Poloshi. He gets his goal. He hasn't scored all season long. And this time in the 70th minute makes it 3-0 to West Ham. Congratulations for getting off the schneid, Alberto Poloshi. Great movement in. You know it was only a matter of time. Missed tackle by Stevens and Poloshi with the goal. And now time to make some subs. 20 minutes left to go. And as you can see, Payet uh, pay looking very tired, as you can see. I'm actually going to move Fellaini up into that role. Since he can play in the center attacking mid role, which means in the midfield, Obiang is going to come in for you. And then as far as left and right side, uh, Doran Rotari is going to come in for Zivkovic. And for now, I'm going to save my last sub. It's probably going to be Kalashnik, Cresswell on for Kalashnik, but for now, we'll just let that go. Seven minutes left, and I did make that Cresswell sub on. And Wolves now coming forward with an attack. One of their few attacks all game. He's still coming forward with it, and that's actually going out for a corner kick. Mares. Whipping it in. Uruti. Back out to Mares. Flipping it into the box. And that's just going to go out for a goal kick. Two minutes of stoppage time was on the clock. But with 15 seconds left, we're definitely going to have a victory on our hands. A much better performance as that shot goes wide. A much better performance here against Wolves than against Manchester United. To pick up all three points and to keep us in eighth place. Definitely a good win all around. Everyone played above a seven. And as you can see, keeps us in 8th place. However, Stoke, <laughs> Stoke's dropping down. Stoke is now in 7th place, as I believe they would have lost their match. They lost to Crystal Palace. Interesting. But as you can see, us sitting in 8th place. And let's take a look at our next few matches. Chelsea is upcoming. That's not going to be good. But taking a look at the schedule, we will come back for the last two matches of the season. And that will be against Norwich and Man City. But of course, out out of camera we're gonna to have to Chelsea Southampton Cardiff and Crystal Palace I think we can get a result versus Norwich especially 16th place Norwich I believe a wins on that but Manchester City that's going to be an interesting one that one can decide will probably decide if we're gonna finish in seventh place or not so when we come back Norwich Man City to round out our second season here at West Ham so until that time, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new and you want to see more and new FM content. Any comments, suggestions, questions, anything else, please leave in the comment box below. But as always, this is Gendo, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and peace out.